Niall O'Mara and I watch All About Sport on Kevin TV. I'm going to need it at the start, okay? Welcome to All About Sport on CavanTV.com, coming to you live from the top of the town studios in Cavan Town, sponsored by DrumlinMedia.com. All About Sport is Ireland's first live web TV sports programme with nearly 2 million views in 212 countries worldwide. On tonight's show, I am joined by the Cavan Archers Club um, Instinctive Archers. And um, but before we go ahead, great. So we're going to go to the John John Evan clip. Thank you. Thank you very much. So tonight we have Cavan Instinctive Archer Club joining me on the show. And if you want to be the next Robin Hood, then stay tuned and tell all your friends to log on to www.cavantv.com and watch all about sport. But first, congratulations to Drumlane Sons of O'Connell on their win last Friday evening in Templeport. And commiserations to Bulterba Drury's. Um, it was a great game. Um, you've just seen the clip there from um, John Joe Nevin. It was his uh, comeback and he was back in the ring last Saturday night in the Tree Arena and congratulations from all of us here at Cavan TV. Um, so I am now going to speak to uh, Leon Clifton and Jan Van Hasser. Thank you very much for joining us on All About Sport. Very so um, something different. I, I'm interested. I know a lot of you probably can't see, but um, the studio is covered in equipment. Um, so we're going to be showing you lots of bows and arrows and different things. So. Um, as we progress. So Leon, you are the founder of the CIA, the Cavan Instinctive Archery Club here yep. in Cavan Town. Tell us how that all came about. It all came about is uh, my friend actually had an interest in archery and I said I wasn't sure if I was <laughs> interested in it myself, but he bugged me. So we went to Cowes, which is the closest club we could find. And it was such a trip that I decided it'd be quicker to actually create a club in Cavan. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to uh, travel so far. And then my friend stopped doing archery and I just carried on. It kind of snowballed from there. So you're, you're, um, you're, f you're from England originally. You're living yes. in Cavan. How long are you based in Cavan? Oh, I'm here. I'm in Ireland about 22 years now. I'm in Cavan maybe 12 years. When did your love of archery you know, first begin? It, it was only a number of years ago. It was about five or six years ago, Great. which is yeah. quite fresh. So yeah. uh, five, six years. And we started the club two years ago. So. Brilliant. So you and um, tell us like a, a little bit, I suppose, about archery. You know, for anyone watching, what what is archery? I mean, a lot of people might be familiar with bows and arrows, but you mm -hmm. know, obviously, there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, archery is such a broad, wide sport. There's so many different types. It's you could break it down initially into a crossbow, mm -hmm. and for want of a better word, the normal bow, the recurve bow you might see in the Olympics. Right. Yep. There'll be the two main categories, but then you could break the second category into three: the traditional 
the recurve and the compound. The compound is the one with the little wheels on that you see Rambo shooting the poor fellow off a tower. Oh, right, yes. you know? <laughs> <laughs> So they'd be the three main types again. And then under those types, there's more again. Some have shelves, some have rests, some you shoot off your hand. Some are horse bows, long bows, recurve bows. There's just so many different varieties and different styles and ways of shooting. Right, it's so very hard to put it in a nutshell what archery is. There's something there for everyone. Wow, right. So it, it, it has a lot of bows. Mm -hmm. Do you, in Cavanagh Archery Club, do you specifically just have um, a small selection of bows or does it vary? No, it varies. We, it's better to start off on a recurve bow to learn your basic skills, your basic stance. You have to learn the rules before you can ignore them. So we start you off in a recurve bow, but then if you have an interest in the long bow, which is the bow Robin Hood uses, mm -hmm. we have a couple of people shooting them, Matt Carroll, uh, I shoot one occasionally. Then traditional recurve bows, uh, sort of one piece where the limbs don't come off. We have lots of people shooting them. Jan shoots one of those. Mm -hmm. You have a bow there? Yeah. Great. Cool. Yeah. And we'll That's have a, a look at that right now, yeah? Yeah. Excellent. That's so this I'm just so um uh, Jan, you're um Jan van Haster, you're one of the uh, members in the yes. club and obviously something you enjoy doing. How long have you been a member? Well I I saw these fellas uh, in the St. Patrick's Parade last year. Uh, always had an interest in archery. Uh, but always thought, you know, how do you actually get into this and how much does it cost to get into it and how yeah. hard it is to get into it. So I heard about the club. Uh, I heard that they provide you with the equipment initially. They give you the, the tuition, how to string your bow, how to be safe about it, how to do this. So I started in May last year. Uh, thought it was brilliant. Got myself my first bow uh, in, in, the, in the August and then Christmas last year, I got this lovely bow. Brilliant. So and tell so us about this, this lovely bow. Well, it this, this is, is this the Robin Hood style bow? Is that this what you is no, this no. This is no. This is, this is, <laughs> but Leon says it's a, a recurve bow. This is a, a recurve bow. So okay. you can see it's, it's curved and recurved to give it extra force. And the string and touches the limb at the top, so you know it's a recurve bow. Okay. And it's, it's nice and small so that I can take it into the forest when we go shooting shooting targets. Brilliant. And is it, is it heavy? Do you mind if I just... No, it's it? not a bit heavy. So, okay, all right. Very, very, yeah, very pound. light. You can see that. And, okay, shape it. It's beautiful. Very, very it light. Is, it's one piece. It's made of wood, so it'd fall into the traditional category. Excellent. Lovely. Um, is this is it specifically maybe a beginner's bow? It, it doesn't range. I know um, it's just why did you specifically well, for, for choose that bow? For most people, beginning on the bow, they would probably take a, a, get a, a beginner's bow, which is a takedown bow. So that that's in three different bits. You mm -hmm. can put it in a small bag and take it yeah. with you. Put it together whenever you're going to use it. This is sort of the, mm. the next step up of your life. There's plenty more steps if you wanted to go further on from that. Uh, this particular yeah. bow, I, I thought was was nice because I, I we we had the the course in Coot Hill. Uh, out in the forest, and this is a, a, a good bow for that kind of shooting. That works. Um, also, your skill set allows you to shoot this bow because it's shorter, it's not quite so forgiving. A yeah. longer bow might let you away with a few mistakes, but Jan's skill set has obviously come up since he's been shooting, so he could get away with that bow where a beginner might not be quite so well suited. Um, now, you have a lot of bows. Um, you do. <laughs> arrows, even. We do. Not bows, we have lots of arrows here um, in front of us. Now, what you specific um, arrows would you use for this specific um, particular bow? Uh, we, you do, the most important thing is the arrow. and the s Well, the most important thing would be the archer, and then the arrow, and the bow is the least important thing. But you have to have the correct arrow for the correct bow. Okay. If an arrow is too stiff, it's going to go to the left of the target, and if the arrow is too soft, it's going to bend around to the right of the target. So the correct arrow is important. And then you have many different substances you can make the arrows from. Uh, this is a short, this is a quarrel. This is a short arrow used for a crossbow. Right, yeah. In modern times, you make that out of metal, and it's called a bolt. But <laughs> if, you, if you've ever, ever had a quarrel with someone, <laughs> if you have a, this quarrel will kill you. <laughs> it's, um, so it's kind of, yeah, yes, okay, so it's they're quite dangerous. sharp. On but that is, that's for a target point. This is a more traditional arrow you shoot from a longbow. Mm -hmm. It's got goose feathers, which are coloured just for decoration. It's tied in. This yeah. is a very traditional arrow. The shaft is poured off a cedar, where if it was made in England, it probably made of pine. You'd use the materials that were close at hand. Mm -hmm. If you use in America, you'd use turkey feathers. If you was in England, you'd use goose or swan. If you, the wood would have been pine. In America, yeah. you'd use poured off a cedar. Oh, in right. Mongolia, yeah. you'd do rivers, etc. Yeah. And this is a swallow head tip okay, so it would go into you and it wouldn't fall out 
it would catch you up going in and it wouldn't come out. This is for killing people, <laughs> uh, killing animals. <laughs> we don't None of them. these <laughs> arrows will be used, um, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> these are more I'll for show. We don't actually shoot these so much. These are for show, for reenactments and things like that, okay. which is a sideline of ours. So these, these two arrows are made of wood. I don't know if you want to Okay, yeah. Uh, this is just another arrow. This is a shorter arrow, and it's stiffer for a more powerful bow. Lovely. Right. Okay. So that would need to be so stiffer. Now, do you mind me just, do you need to have a license to no. possess and no. have these in your home, or you they have to be used under a probably, con you know? No. So I c could I just yes. go out <laughs> and people could go out in your back garden? Absolutely. There's no, so they're, they're not illegal as such. It's very hard. I don't know how you would license a piece of wood and feathers. How could okay. you say feathers and wood can't be in contact? Yeah. Be, I don't know how you go about licensing, but you basically, you, no, it's no licensing on a bow at all. And even for there you? There is on a crossbow. The cro okay. A crossbow, Just a crossbow is a restricted bow. firearm. You need a license for that. And we will have a look at that. Yeah, so this yeah. is the one way over here, the green one, is it? No, nope. nope. the crossbow, crossbow is here. Yeah, so this one, right, okay. I, I this don't is like a, look at this, this one. This is a reenactment. <laughs> this is a traditional crossbow. It's not really something you buy nowadays for shooting. Okay, yeah. This is something a 14th century or 16th century because of the steel knight would use. Okay, so this would be... The bo yeah, the yeah. bows were used... And they were very devastating, and then they were used by the English and the Welsh. That's the longbow. They were fantastic bowmen. The rest of the Europe, because the amount of time and effort it took to train these people up, <laughs> they favoured the crossbow. You could train someone using a crossbow in a week, because you basically you put the coil in, you pull the string back, you point it at the thing, person usually you want to hit, and you pull the trigger. As it's very, as that. it's much much slower, and not just as accurate. I would say not just as accurate as the normal bow. Okay, so not just, but they, they and were that, that was the quarrel we had so earlier. So this particular this one. one is, you you know... This is a reenactment. This is for display purposes, really. Right, okay. So you can't really yes. go and use but it. But if you, if you had a proper crossbow, that's a restricted firearm. It needs to be licensed. Right, okay. But okay. that particular one's not. Okay. And just to finish on the arrows, this is just another decorated wooden arrow. Uh, there's a fletch missing off this one. But I see you can paint them anywhere you like. Mm -hmm. And these are the plastic okay. ones. This is just a plastic resin that would cost you maybe three euros it's quite cheap that's a very cheap arrow yeah that's the thing like the mm -hmm. kind of pricing of the different arrows well i made these ones myself they cost between three well no i say between five and twelve euros to make yourself or by yourself oh, right. these ones are very cheap this plastic they're three or four euros but they're not mm -hmm. they're not really good value because they break very quickly okay so you they're want something a bit more durable yes this is a carbon arrow now carbon arrows cost between five euros up to ridiculous amounts but these uh, are absolutely straight. They're 100% working on 100% broken. You can't bend one. Like the wooden ones can get bent, the plastic ones get bent, and yeah. your arrows do this. So then they're no yes, good again. You can trust yeah. these. Thi and the carbon arrow is what you'd use for a compound bow. Right, and the They only shoot compound you don't, uh, yeah. with carbon arrows. You don't use wood. Right, OK. Gosh. And these have plastic veins, where the other ones had feathers. You'd refer to them as fletches, where right. these are veins. They're, they're plastic. Great. Wow, yeah. so many bows. So this is like um, a lot of, um, well, there's a lot, a lot of information, a lot to kind of get your yes. head around as well and kind of decide there's on what so you want to There's so much choice. So much choice, exactly. If for you want to leave yourself open to it, but you don't yeah. need to. You can come along to the club, I'll give you a bow, I'll give you an arrow, I'll show you how to stand, how to shoot. And then as your skill set develops, your interest develops. Like yeah. Jan's on his second bow in two years. That's yeah. Funny. But you see, once you got, once you start shooting, and once you get the the, the, the enjoyment out of it, because a lot of people would start a new hobby, yeah. and they realise after a little while that they didn't enjoy it as much mm -hmm. as they thought. So you don't want to get too much into it. And I think one of the advantages of the club is is that they provide all the stuff to find out whether you enjoy it or not. If you yeah. enjoy it, then you can do more Absolutely. with it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then once Absolutely. you start enjoying it, you find that people start broadening out their interest, it, you know, get people that start mm -hmm. making arrows or you get people that start making different bits of bow or different bits of equipment. So people get an interest in the whole the whole picture of it, if you right. like. And, okay. and, and that's where uh, you get new challenges and that's when you get the confidence to start competing in, in maybe competitions either within the club or between clubs. Mm -hmm. and Great, the so the there is competition, so something to kind of, yeah. you know, um, to, to work towards. How many members would you say is in the club? We've 28 yeah. members in Carbon now. Great, mm -hmm. wow, so that's, that's a lot. So it's been, we've been growing very fast. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've always noticed that there's a lot of, you know, latent interest, if you like, once people know that there's a low threshold for mm -hmm. having a go at it. Yeah. Uh, and then an, an awful lot of people actually stick around and, and, like I said, become involved. 
Yep. Uh, Leon has managed to set up a, a, a forest course so that we can actually go outdoors and, and shoot at the targets outdoors. We have a national uh, competition next Sunday. All the clubs from around Ireland are coming down to shoot. Great. So um, as do you, are you involved with all of this organising? You're literally, you've thrown yourself into this. Obviously, Leon, is something you're very passionate about, <laughs> I can see. Um, funding, the equipment, getting all the bows and arrows yes, well there the for new members. As Jan know. said, the, bo well the bows we supply are basic bows, uh, yeah. a snake bow. They cost maybe 80 euros each. Because right. some of the bows in our club cost between 80 and 500 euros. Okay, right. It's not even the most expensive, so you can pay a lot more than that if you want to. Yeah. But that would be the kind of range that we have in the club at the moment. So it can be very expensive if you just throw yourself in and then decide in a few weeks you don't like it. And then it's so left I don't actually guard. let anybody join for six weeks. You mm -hmm. have to come along for six weeks and then if you still like it, then I'll ask you to buy your own arrows and then you can start investing in your own equipment. Right, That's okay. the way do it. So, so Jan, y you obviously loved it. What kind of, you know, um, skills and, and tell us a bit more about the technical side, you know, did you have any difficulties at start um, in regards to eyesight and being able to see where, you know, obviously you're where you want to shoot. Uh, did yeah. you find that hard, you know? Well, is that initially, I had no idea about archery at all. Yeah. So I started completely from scratch. And Leon sort of finds out what your dominant eye is so that you know how to stand and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it, there's a lot of emphasis initially on the safety of it because, you know, they are potentially dangerous. So there's always a lot of emphasis on how, how to keep the whole thing safe. Mm -hmm. And then gradually you get you get the hang of it. You know what I mean? You get the initial technique. Um, but even if you come with no previous knowledge at all, even if you've never shot a bow in your life, that's where you start. And in fact, it's a bit like learning to drive. You're nearly better off <laughs> without too many preconceptions or bad mm. habits, yeah, if you like. Of course. Uh, yeah. And then and then you get coached by people that have been doing this for a long time and you get tips along the way. And people say, well, try this, try that. And then there's all the little sort of details that you, you gradually get better at. We all and help each other. Yeah, and initially, initially it, it can be frustrating enough trying <laughs> to hit the target, all right. But you, you've, you fairly rapidly find that your, that your skills will start coming. And, and I suppose people all get to the level that they're going to reach. Yes. In many ways, I suppose, the attraction of, of archery is, is that although there's a competitive element competing with other people, there's an awful lot of competing with yourself nearly. You know, mm -hmm. you're trying yeah. to be the best you can. And so you see people in, in the time that I've been there, you know, you see people gradually get better at it. And, and as they get better, they become a bit more competitive and want to people test themselves. People have trained a bit than me now, yeah. it's very frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, don't pass you out. We actually have some photographs. And just so people can maybe um, get a little bit of an idea what the, um, the, the club get up to. So um, we might just roll them photographs there, Dave. Right, so we actually don't ca have, can't just access them here in the studio, but um, we have some photographs, and um, I I know there, there's some photographs um, from what I remember seeing from the Cootail from the forest. Some of the some of them are the. And you actually though. have you're involved in painting. Well, again, you know, like I said, some people have started developing other interests <laughs> yeah, associated exactly. with this. And one of the things that I never thought of doing was was painting targets, painting animals. Which is uh, very surprising because <laughs> his paintings are fantastic. <laughs> I'm not just yeah. saying that they're, they're absolutely amazing. So Shame we don't have the photographs <laughs> up. Have, have really you got the photographs? Are, are, we can't hear you in here. Be great to <laughs> hear. But he's painted full size deer and tigers and foxes and rabbits and wolves and. Yeah. I'm just amazed that he hasn't been doing it for years because they're all absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I don't know, actually. Did did we get did our viewers get to see them pictures? We did. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So we can continue. So so Aaron and if you, so some of the photographs that have uh, been coming up. So um, how long would it take you to paint one of them? Like they're quite large as well. Um, well, th th there was one picture of a tiger. The life size rhinoceros is on screen now. Oh right. Okay. Okay. okay well, let's well, talk about the it. The rhinoceros is is about six feet six feet tall, <laughs> and so it, it took <laughs> me about four hours painting. Wow. Well. Um, and like I said, I, about a year ago, I started painting, and it started, you know, started small and, and sort of worked my way up. Some of the tigers, I think there was a picture of a tiger there. The tiger is it's about six favorite, foot yeah. long tiger as well. And again, it took about four hours to paint. And, and it's, you know, and once you see them in the forest, and the, the rhinoceros is it's actually so a picture in the, the forest. The tiger's at the top of a very long hill surrounded by trees. <laughs> and when the light comes in and shines on it, it just sort of glows. You just think it's like a real... It's amazing, <laughs> yeah. It gets a real sense. It gets, well, it gets a real forest. sense, and I suppose that's part 
part of the excitement of right. of starting to shoot on the, on the, on the, a, an outdoor course. I mean, apart from the fact that you're outdoors and that you know you have the weather and all that, and you're walking around the forest, it actually gives a, a sense of excitement that there is that that element of of the hunt in it. Now, it's all very staged and it's all very sort of, of controlled, but at the same time, you do get that that feel of Absolutely. of 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 a hunt in it, all right, and 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 that's part of the excitement, all right. Mm. Sounds great. It, Jan's painted eighteen pictures. They are back eighteen, and, and on the front eighteen we have three D targets. Oh, we have proper so full size like foam, foam made. Yeah, that type of foam. Rubber. Yeah, rubber foam. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they're so. full life size deer and wolves and badgers and do we have fox? No, we don't. <laughs> we have beavers <laughs> and cranes and, and we have eighteen targets in the front. All you life really size. feel like action man when you're yeah. out in that forest, do you? It's that just is. like every boy's dream, like every man's <laughs> you should dream. You see me running yeah. around when oh. I'm on my own. There's no one watching oh, me. Really does sound like there quite is a fun. Set, there is a sense <laughs> of that, but but having said that, it's not just action man. There's actually plenty of action <laughs> women too. Absolutely, well, it's actually you surprising. Yeah. You know, it, in our club, we have we have men, women, boys, and girls. Uh, they come in all ages and all sizes. Uh, and uh, the, the interesting thing is, women in the interesting thing yeah, is that even some of the some of the small ones are uh, are after not that long a period of time are actually quite capable of competing at national level. Brilliant. You know, because you know some of our younger members mm -hmm. have won medals at, at um, national shoots. So well. you know, so I think to just have your three the three D. Um, Badger target up there now, so. Okay. Um, That's a very hard yes. target. <laughs> he's quite long, but he's quite narrow, so you have to get yeah. the trajectory just right. He's actually quite a hard target, that fella. Yeah, so mm. like life size. Yes, yeah, yeah. life yeah. size, yeah. Um, and he's in the middle of a badger set as well. There's a badger set around him, oh, so right. it's the appropriate place for him. When, when, so when you go out, um, you know, on your forest cor course, uh, you know, obviously the forest f for safety has does it have to be closed off. You know, f obviously you can't mm. have walkers and different people out and about. How does that work, um, Leon? Well, How often do you do the forest cor course? I planned the course for it was over six months, getting exactly where everything needed to be. Because if you miss the target. And you overshoot. You can't be shooting to the path of someone that's walking behind, mm -hmm. or someone already taking another shot. Uh, even if you have to take into account, even if someone does a ridiculously bad shot yeah. and shoots very high or to the left or to the right. So it took a lot of planning. It was over six months it took me to plan it. Uh, and then it's just a lot of safety. Before every shoot, the course gets safety checked. Mm -hmm. And just common sense. If we saw uh, a possibility of a hazard or a danger, we just fix it there and then. We don't put it on the long finger, we well, just fix it. There's plenty of signage yeah. up to warn the people. Absolutely. That yeah. you know, this this tape casual signage. bypass is just, just a very peaceful you and quiet of the forest where we are, but at the same time, there's plenty of signage to say, you know, be careful you're entering a, an, ar an archery course and, and, you know, stay out. Yeah. Because it could be dangerous. Yeah. It's, it's, it's dangerous. designed in such a way that you couldn't just wander across uh, a shooting path anyway. Yeah, just come br brilliant. Um, and how often um, are the courses, uh, you know, can you do this in Coot Hill? Like, um, you know, how we often do, do you get to do it? Do it as often as you like. We do it every Sunday. We were trying to meet up oh. a few of us every Sunday. Great. Okay. I, I might run down there during the week. In the summer months, we have a bit more daylight, you know, yeah. what you feed the kids Not and green. do what you're meant to do in the house. <laughs> <laughs> or grab the yeah. <laughs> you can get out and about. Now your governing body, body is uh, SIFA. So SIFA, yeah. Society of Irish Field Archers. Right, so that I suppose he's there. Um, and, and tell us a little bit more about um, memberships and, and, and if any new members are, wish to join, how to kind of get involved and the okay. cost and where, you know, who to kind of get in touch with. Well, the thing to do is to contact uh, me. You can contact me or members of the club through cavaninstinctivearchery.ie or instinctivearchery.ie or if you just do a search on Google for Archery Cavern, mm -hmm. we should come up and right. you'll recognise our logo. Oh yes, so we're just going board. to, um, I'll just get it, this is their the Instinctive Archery, just their card, but it was the logo, um, and it's I don't know if you can see logo. it there, it's basically the two-fingered logo and oh, you know what you. I thought, I'm sure you're thinking exactly what I was thinking when, when the guys were explaining to me, but it gives a little bit of background on it's not really the two fingers I'll let that we'd all be associated with. Well, okay, well, well <laughs> you know, rather than think how rude, it's actually uh, apparently it's uh, historically associated with the Battle of Argentina. It's a bit rude. Where uh, the, the, the English archers fighting the French showed them that they still had their two archery fingers. Mm -hmm. uh, archers being caught in the wars and during the Hundred Year War often had their fingers cut off so they would be uh, unable to, to yes. fire their bow again. Because they and were so feared. they yeah. were basically showing the French that they still had their fingers and that they were gonna yes. they were gonna get them basically. And if so you come close enough, I'm gonna have you. And that's oh it was a it was a it was a rude that. gesture. I'm yeah. gonna kill you if you come close enough. Yeah, Here and that's kind of where it, it kind of comes from. Then exactly, doesn't yeah. it? Right. it's never been proven, but that's the room that everybody that's likes. Good <laughs> logo, I like it. I really like it. So I really was thinking. That's what a is instinctive. 
and the, and the, the, other thing, the other thing for people to remember, if they feel interested at all, uh, what they can do, and people certainly have done it before, on a Wednesday night in Balinya, they can turn up by yep. 7 o'clock. That's when we normally have our practice nights indoors in, uh, in uh, Balinya Community Hall. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, once they turn up there, Leon gives them the, the instruction. Uh, you pay just your 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 contribution to the the rent of the hall that night, and uh, you know eventually then you know if you say yeah. you know you, you join for the six yeah. weeks. No one joins season. before six weeks, just to make sure you like it. I don't let anyone join. I don't want to, anybody to incur. I'd, I'd like to have lots and lots of members paying a little bit each, mm -hmm. rather than a few members paying a lot. Yeah. So the whole concept of opening the club and having shoots in different places was you come along, you pay your five euros a week. That's all you need to pay. You pay your insurance, mm -hmm. which Archery Island is 80 euros, but with CIFA, it's only 40 euros a year. But you don't have to look at that for six weeks. Oh, right, okay. Okay, so it's only your five euros for the first six weeks. So like 10 euros for the first four weeks, then five euros, five euros, and then just five euros after that. Very cheap. So I mean, yes, yeah, it I really mean, is. It's, it's, very, it's very doable. The, the whole idea is, is that the thresholds for people to get into it is made as low as possible. Exactly. And that's really the idea of it, you know, that you're not put off by the idea of having to make big investments in equipment and yeah. bows yeah. and what have you, and, and a lot of technical stuff. You don't, you don't, you know, you can start very basic and work your way up from there. And the don't age group you can start at, you know, do you have any children? Any, or anyone under 18 needs to have a responsible adult with them. Mm -hmm. Under 18. Okay. For common sense reasons and insurance reasons, if you're under 18, you need to have a responsible adult with you. Mm -hmm. But no, I I would teach anyone from eight years up. And just actually on that point, you you tell us about your involvement with the Cavan Sports Partnership before we finish up. Um, okay. your involvement I, I just approached Cavan Sports Partnership last year and I asked if they wanted to do a course with archery because it's anyone can do archery. Yeah. Um, we done the course last year for people with special needs, acquired brain injuries, Down syndrome, and it went so well. We done it again this year, and it went so well in February that now I'm in the middle of another course now, uh, doing it for the Monaghan Sports Partnership, which is great. Brilliant. And um, so. be and before we finish up as well, just we have a few more bits of. You've got many different gloves. We just met because you've brought gone to all the trouble of bringing all <laughs> these in. You've gloves, and I'm guessing. These, yes, right? exactly. That's, okay. to that's to protect your arm. You can get very basic ones like this, which will cost you maybe six or seven euros, which <laughs> yeah. is strapped to the inside your arm. I love dressing up. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get more fancy ones job. like these. All oh, right. Leather so ones. And the ones you're wearing. Ones. You're the first person to wear that. I haven't even worn that myself yet. <laughs> really I like it. Day. So, and it's got These all will cost you maybe between 20 and 40 euros each. Okay, and what's, you know, I mean, why would I need to wear these? Because if okay. you're shooting in a very straight line, I don't know if the camera can see me, the string can hit off the inside of your arm. Ah. It can leave you bruises. Okay. Some so people don't care going around with bruises, black and blue, on the inside of your arm. But I'm sure the ladies like a badge of honor, people, some people don't like it Yeah. Yet. So, so th this is important. So protective wear for the yep. arms, great. These uh, are gloves. This is the three finger glove. Don't know if you want to stick your hand in yep. there. Okay, the three finger glove. And yes, so you've got the three fingers to pull the string with. You put it on back to front, but okay. That's okay. <laughs> we're going to just... Here we go. Here we go. Don't forget with our Do archery hand. course. Yeah. No, no, right no, no, no. hand. Don't forget with our archery course your in right Kutel. Your right hand, yeah. We yeah. have uh, a hut and seating facilities and barbecues. So even if you don't like archery, the whole family can come down. Those that like to shoot, shoot. And the rest can sit around the hut drinking yeah. tea and reading a book. That sounds great. This thing here is unusual. This glove is for the thumb release. Instead mm -hmm. of using your fingers to pull the string, you wrap your thumb oh around right. the string, put your finger over it, and you pull the string this way. Okay, right, okay. and I see that. So you. This is an unusual one because I shoot Asiatic, an Asian style with a thumb. I shoot from the right hand side of the bow instead of the European left hand side of the bow. And th well, I don't want to confuse you. Why, why is that? <laughs> that that's, that's the way. That's the way they shoot traditionally horse bows. These are referred to as horse bows, the reflex yeah. bows. This is beautiful. This yes. one. What is this like? It's a lovely. Um, it's f three or four different types of wood, and this is horn on the inside. <laughs> Yeah. And this is artificial sinew, it's not real sinew because okay. it's wicked. It's not as beautiful that is gorgeous. That's from Groza, he's a very well known bow maker in Hungary. That's my own personal bow. Where where do you source all your equipment from? In Ireland or is there anywhere we're local? We're online now, we're all one small community. We get stuff from America or Hungary, wherever it's cheapest. All out, yeah. Flybo in Ireland, Flybo is a great place of traditional archery. And if you wanted more up to date archery, you could go to shooting style. Mm -hmm. or Merlin in, in England is very good, or Master Archery. Yeah. It depends what you want. Some people have better value for different things. Yeah, but you so know this by talking to each other. Great. Join a club, they'll know the best place to get whatever Yeah, and you've got all your information there. And of course, the store all your, and I'm going to just um, pull up one of these. There it goes. 
These are just different quivers. No, th these are. Okay. So these are just. I'll this one here. These around. This one here, you would put on your back like this, and then you can okay. just take the arrows out the back like Robin Hood. So when you're going through you the forest, you need arm, one of these. <laughs> this way. Yeah. And that's. Got, I'll put that down for it. Right, it? And this one here, you would wear. You can probably see it on the camera. But you'd wear it around your waist okay. this way the belt so you could take your arrows out there and shoot them brilliant they're just different wow. quivers different ways of carrying your arrows anything else early on you want to show us we've we've looked at m uh, a great variety of the of the of the um and this is a quiver as well this is obviously a very arrows. traditional <laughs> very old it's just a basket but you put your belt through there and, and and hook it in yes but some people like this some people like the traditional bow the wooden arrows the traditional quiver some people like the very modern recurves with the plastic arrows or carbon. It's whatever you're into. It's an expression of yourself in a lot of ways. Sounds great. Well, look at um, we, we've we've come to the end. But if anybody is interested in, in in get in touch with Instinctive Archery here in Cabin Town, and um, you can contact them on. Can I give this number out? Absolutely. Yeah, no yep. problem. Oh eight seven nine eight six six zero six zero and info at instinctivearchery.com. Um, and they're based here in Cabin Town, and they will do a meet and greet, and Absolutely. I suppose have a tour in Balinya Community Centre yes. in in Balinya. And if you want more information, are you on a Facebook, Twitter page? Yes, or? we yep. don't have a Twitter page. We're on Facebook, and you can get us at our website or the number you just mentioned: oh eight seven nine eight six six zero six zero. Great, and thanks for actually that was brilliant, Leon Absolutely. and Jan. Thank you very much for joining us on All Fight Sport. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you very much to my guests tonight from Cabin Instinctive Archery Club. Um, so that's it from All About Sport for this week. I will be back again at the same time next Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. If you'd like your sport featured on the show, simply contact Drumla Media at Gmail. Dot com or contact me on my uh, Twitter page at Cavan TV Sport. So it's goodbye from me, Louise O'Reilly. <laughs>